Hey, welcome to the Danger Zone, it's Ashley. Everything in this video was found on a public domain, and the full disclaimer is down below. Lots of love and many blessings your way. And a big thank you to my buddies Peter, Deborah, journalist Jay, and Miranda. I appreciate y'all so much. All of my newbies, I want to say thank you and welcome. Well, and I think so much of what we're seeing as well is that, you know, it's not even in the big moments, right? It's in the quiet moments where racism and unconscious bias lies, and as you said, lies and hides and thrives. And it's those nuances that I think is, makes it confusing for a lot of people to understand the role that they play in that, either passively or actively, but I think even more so passively. And so much of what I've come to the understanding of, especially in learning even more about it of late, and obviously having had personal experience with it as well, but... In people's complacency, they're complicit. And that, I think, is the shift that we're saying to go, it's not enough to just be a bystander and say, well, it wasn't me. And that's what I think was very much manifested in, in what you're feeling from people's outpouring surrounding the murder of George Floyd. That if it wasn't that this wasn't always happening, it's that it's come to a head at a time where people just said, enough. And I'm curious to know from all of you how you're seeing the effects of Black Lives Matter in, you know, obviously, Mike, you're in uh, Manchester, you said, but around the world where the rest of you are, how you're seeing that play out and, and percolate there. And they most likely will have the best and most informed diagnosis of the problem. Um, and, and that will in itself lend to a more complete and, let's say, comprehensive solution. What I'm hearing from that is know when to lead and know when to listen. Yes. And those are probably the two key things in this moment that I think people, that distinction of knowing when lucky you need to be on the right side of this, as we all do, but you also need to know that in being on the right side of it sometimes just involves listening and having an understanding of what's at play. So when you look across the Commonwealth, there's no way that we can move forward unless we acknowledge the past. And I think so many people have, been, have done such an amazing, incredible job of acknowledging the past and trying to right those wrongs. But I think we all acknowledge on here that there is so much more still to do. It's not going to be easy, and in some cases it's not going to be comfortable. But it needs to be done, because guess what? Everybody benefits. And so I think there's a hell of a lot that we together need to acknowledge. But I only see, I only see hope and optimism in the fact that we, we can do this together. We have to, in this moment in time, it's say, bit, huh? we're going to have to be a little uncomfortable right now because it's only in pushing through that discomfort that we get to the other side of this and find the place, as you're pointing out, where a high tide raises all ships. Mm. Equality does not put anyone on the back foot. It puts us all on the same footing, which is a fundamental human right, and that's what we're talking about here. The world is craving a healing through everything that's happened over these several months, and we really look back at history from obviously much longer than that. And I think Alicia, to your point earlier, saying talking about discomfort and why it's an important recognition is that it's like growing pains. Growing pains are painful. This process is painful, and it has been for a long time. But through that immense pain, what we can have tremendous faith in is knowing that there will be growth. And that's what we're saying happen every single day as all of you are out there campaigning, fighting the right fight, being on the right side of history and ensuring that we can get closer to seeing this truly as our past and not something that we have to revisit again and again and again. So we really we thank you and commend you for your efforts on that. It is inspiring for both of us to, to watch and to bear witness to and why we, of course, made the time and find it a huge honor to be able to have this time with all of you today. Guys, I'm, I'm, I'm aging, right? I'm 35 already. And That's not aging. It is aging compared to these guys. No. Um, but the, the optimism and the hope that we get is listening and speaking to people like you because there is no turning back now, right? Everything is coming to a head. Things, solutions exist and, and change is happening far quicker than it ever has done before. But you know, that's your, your, all your points is we have to acknowledge but also learn from the past where people have tried to do something similar and failed for one reason or another. Mm. How are we going to be successful this time? Because mm. all the clues are there. We just need this movement to be able to continue this momentum for as long as it takes. Um, and you guys are all, all leading that. Mike, sorry, you were you're, you're next when I jumped in. Right there with you, standing in solidarity and certainly doing everything that we can from our end. Um, we're going to get there. And we have a lot of renewed faith and energy in that, having had this conversation. So well done. Yeah, well done, guys. Just a huge thank you to everything that you're doing, the voice that you have, and hopefully the QCT platform is is making life easier for you guys and connecting you with so many people around the world who are fighting the same fight. So, 
yeah, this is um, this change is needed and it's coming. Thank you all so much for learning even more about it of late and obviously having had personal experience with it as well. But in people's complacency, they're complicit. In my honest opinion, you guys, I'm outside looking in like everybody else. Harry is heavily medicated these days. And I guess what's giving that away for me is the fact he cannot keep his eyes open. The very last time I heard somebody talk like Harry, they were swigging out of a Mad Dog 2020 bottle. I am not joking. He slurred his speech and made no sense. He said, until the Commonwealth, the monarchy, can admit their faults, nobody can move on. Calling them a racist and that they needed to come on out and admit this so everybody could move on. So what's good for the goose should be good for the gander. Where's his apology so we can all move on? For that matter, where's hers? They look totally digital. It was so freaky. They didn't even blink correctly. And God forbid if somebody else got a word in. Now, if you're not familiar with Journalist J, really fast. He's a journalist, been in the business nearly 30 years. Based out of London, and have a super close relative of mine that happens to be a journalist turned producer. And he's the one that introduced me to him a couple of years ago. So Jay contacts me twice a week. He shares with me what's going on around town. And I differ on a couple of things, Marchie being one of them. And I do believe this child is beautiful to look at. I love all babies. But I just have a hard time believing that it belongs to both Megan and Harry. Whereas Jay is just hell-bent that this is their child. He says that things are being planted in the media by Megan's PR people, throwing the royal family under the bus, of course, even Harry. And it seems to be that she may be setting up a divorce. It's like Jay says, every couple of months, it seems like some tidbit about Archie is going to be out in the media. Like he has a new tooth in, filed his first lawsuit. He's just growing to be a big boy. Speaking of his lawsuit, Jay told me to bank on this being thrown out. This particular lawsuit was not Megan's idea. This was Harry. Megan's not even trying to push on it hard. Because just like she has people playing stuff in the media, she set this entire photo shoot up. The one in the park in Canada. The entire thing was a setup allegedly. We've heard so much about Harry and Meghan being at odds behind closed doors. During this time when this photo shoot was set up, she had taken off to Canada with Murchie, right? And he had stayed behind in England and it was teetering on, hey, what do I do? Do I go with her or do I stay with my family? Jay says the court documents will reveal what I'm about to tell you. So by setting up this photo shoot, she had the ability to call Harry crying and whining screaming that they're unprotected. They're scared. The next thing we know, Harry's packed his bags and he's stepping onto the tarmac there at the airport in Canada. He was there to protect his family. Yet again, she manipulated his decision. And of course, word spread like wild saying she set all of this up. So it kind of feels like he wanted to hold her feet to the fire. And he went through with this lawsuit. All of it's going to come out. And you just may see a different side of Harry. According to my buddy Jay. Hey, listen, she's already getting a taste of what life's like without hair. And a big thank you to my friend Deborah. I appreciate you sharing this with us. Megan's not been doing so good in L.A. She's so low. All by herself. Her mama's not even with her. They say she's finding it really hard to cope with everything. She's been hustling every second away from Murchie. Trying to make that money. Where's Harry these days? He's nowhere to be found. I was told this morning he's been spending all of his free time with another woman on lockdown. And she lives close enough to where he can just pedal his bicycle to her house. This entire situation has taken a major toll on his and Megan's relationship these days. In fact, it seems almost as if this person has become a major obsession of Harry. He has been spending all of his free time over at Adele's place. And according to what I read, she really takes the edge off of his homesickness. It seems like Harry started off using sleek moves on Megan, telling her, hey, look, I'm going out for a quick pedal. So she's been noticing him away from the house an awful lot. You know, she no longer has friends to fall back on. She's completely alone by herself with all of this. She's ran off all her co-conspirators, her mama included. I've got information on that too, but that's another video for another day.
What he likes most about Adele is the fact that she has a very fun, outgoing personality. And they say she's not serious, not all business. She'll cut up and drink quite a few, and they sit by the pool and have a good time on lockdown. <laughs> While Megan's at the house, trying to come up with another money-making scheme. <laughs> he snuck out on his bicycle, trying to shimmy up the road as fast as he can to get to his drinking buddy by the pool. So they said one day Megan noticed, hey, Harry's not here. Megan found out from one of the staffers at the house when she was looking for him one evening, claims a source. And they say it's not like Harry was trying to hide his friendship with Adele. More than Megan didn't seem to notice it was happening. She's just been too busy trying to make that money. But all of this has caused nothing but turmoil in their life recently. Stacked up with everything else they're going through. She really doesn't care about Harry, and this is just my opinion. Even in Lady C's book, it says he married for love. And she for status. So she's not sweating her man with another woman in that way. I think she's more sweating the only opportunity she has left. Can you imagine what life's going to be like for her after the divorce? Nobody wants to deal with her right now. But listen, this has to have been put out by her people. But just hours ago, it was put out in the media. She has no absolute remorse for telling the quote unquote truth on the royal fam. They're saying she was very proud of herself for finally calling out Queen Elizabeth on her behavior. She's done lost her mind. You think I'd ever admit this? She must like to run like really fast because that's what she's going to be doing. Y'all, they're even saying that she told the Queen you'll never see Archie again. She told her this recently. All that makes sense to me is that she's really not afraid because she does perhaps have something major on the royal family. Aside from her maybe having lost her mind, oh my goodness, that's all that could like totally make sense. Seriously, look at who the family's hanging out with. Bill Clinton asked Andrew to give Kevin Spacey a tour of the palace. And here sits Kevin Spacey with Ghislaine Maxwell on the throne, the actual throne. I guess it didn't bother the queen that some nasty butt was sitting in her chair. Because directly after, they took Kevin Spacey and uh, honored him with a medal and a, a certificate of everything. You are the company you keep, folks. So what all does Megan know and how soon after the divorce will it all come out? This is going to happen really fast. And I'm predicting very soon. I hope everybody has a great day today. I'll see you soon and we'll talk fast. Y'all stay safe and be blessed.